that's fine. It's Tuesday, April 5th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and we're back in our Shelton studio today with a full show of local news, sports update and weather with Rob Adams, history with Donald Ang, and later on, some health buzz with Griffin Hospital. But first, on to some of the top stories we're following today. A Westport mother of two young children, one and five years old, was arrested after the children were found at two businesses along busy Post Road East where they had wandered when she left them home alone to go shopping last week. 33-year-old Natalie Bonnie of Post Road East was charged with two counts of risk of injury to a minor in connection with the incidents. Officers were dispatched to investigate two reports of unattended children at separate Post Road East locations at about 8 o'clock at night on March 29th. A one-year-old found in the area of Toyota of Westport and a five-year-old discovered alone at Walgreens, according to police. Police said they were able to determine the children were siblings and lived at 655 Post Road East, where they later located Bonnie, identified as the children's mother. She told officers that she had left the children at home unsupervised while she took a bus to go shopping. The State Department of Children and Families was called to investigate the case. And in other news today, Darien police are searching for a suspect accused of using counterfeit bills at three Tokenique Road shops on April 1st. An employee at Johnny's Records at 45 Tokenique Road called police to report a counterfeit bill at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. She told police that a Latina woman with black hair wearing a red top and black pants had purchased two bottles of Grateful Dead brand non-alcoholic wine with a $100 bill and received $70 in change. Upon examining the $100 bill, the employee went to the neighboring Sono Bakery to see if they had a pen to identify fakes. A Sono employee reported that they too had received a counterfeit $100 bill earlier in the day. Police conducted a canvas of the area and spoke with the owner of Townhouse Fines, who also reported a suspicious bill. She said a woman matching the suspect's description had attempted to purchase a $14 book with a $100 bill. The owner said the bill appeared to be a bit suspicious, and she told the woman she didn't have enough change to complete the transaction. The suspect was seen leaving the area in a gold Honda Civic, and police are still investigating that case. A Bridgeport man has been charged with threatening a local family following a road rage incident in Trumbull, according to the Connecticut Post. State police said 24-year-old Lonnie Cross of Trumbull Avenue in Bridgeport threatened a family with a gun after they refused to pull over for him on Route 25 on Sunday night. Cross was charged with having a weapon in a motor vehicle, threatening and first-degree reckless endangerment, as well as criminal possession of a firearm. Police said the local family, a husband, wife, and their daughter were traveling north on Route 25 in the left lane when the husband noted that a car was nearly on their rear bumper. The driver of the other car, later identified as Cross, began flashing his lights and then pulled into the right lane to pass the family. As Cross pulled even with the family's car, police said the wife rolled down the rear window to take a photograph of Cross. Cross then yelled at the woman and pointed a handgun at the family through the driver's window. Police said the family then pulled to the side of the road and called for help. State police said they pulled Cross's car over a short time later and found a loaded 9mm handgun in his car. An Eversource Energy's project of trimming and removing trees along 66 miles of New Canaan Roads is now on hold. The town's Department of Public Works has stepped in and asked Eversource to limit their work to trimming and not remove any trees until the town and the public get a clear understanding of the scope of the work. Eversource introduced the project in early March, saying they would be trimming and removing trees in New Canaan in order to reduce the frequency of power outages and shorten the duration of any outage. The plan calls for replacing some of the wooden utility poles with taller and thicker poles, going from 40 feet to 45, and installing rubber-coated lines that would be more resistant to falling branches. There's much more on that story at ncadvertiser.com. And in some cool news today, a set of inexpensive marketing campaigns put together by the Georgetown Volunteer Fire Department suddenly have the potential to go viral, with one Facebook video garnering 1,000 views a minute yesterday afternoon. 
The video, which shows Georgetown residents guessing at the cost of the fire department equipment, has been viewed 125,000 times in the seven hours since it's been posted. Its unexpected success couldn't have come at a better time for the department, which just released a calendar satirizing the classic sexy firefighter calendar. Georgetown Fire Department Financial Secretary Hal Garrard said that they've had a big shortage in their budget this year, and it turned out they needed money for new boots, which cost $555 a pair. A couple years ago, his wife had mentioned they should think about doing a calendar, which he scoffed at at the time. However, years have passed since that suggestion, but the department's equipment needs required some new unusual ideas. The department, with help of local photographer Nina Pomeroy, took two days to produce a number of humorous images for the calendar, including a number of firefighters serenading First Selectman Julia Pemberton in the Rancho Alegre restaurant and this poker scene that you're seeing right now. But there's much more on that story at the Reading Pilot. Com. And in other news today, a milestone in the way victims of domestic and sexual violence receive services in the greater Bridgeport area occurred on Monday with the official opening of Connecticut's first family justice center. The center completed the first phase of a $1.2 million renovation of its Bridgeport campus, which will make room for offices for a host of community partners, including police, prosecutors, and attorneys. The partners can now provide on-site assistance to the thousands of women, men, and children by offering full complement of help under one roof, thereby streamlining the way victims engage with the supportive services and criminal justice systems. Nancy Doniger of the Easton Courier visited the news center last week before the official opening. She talked with Beth, Beth Fitzpatrick of the Center for Family Justice. Check out that video right now. So this office here, will be an office that would house our law enforcement partners. So that would be police officers from Easton, Fairfield, Monroe, Stratford, Trummel, Bridgeport, who would come into the building to see our clients who have been victimized by either domestic violence or sexual assault or child abuse. And our clients would be able to see the, the appropriate law enforcement person who's working on their case in our building, rather than having to go from our building to see their advocates, to the police station to see the officer working on their case. Everyone will be located in one safe location, and it will minimize the amount of um, bureaucracy and red tape um, that somebody who's been through um, this kind of abuse or trauma would have to experience by sort of keeping them in one centralized, safe, centralized location. All services are free and confidential. You can learn more at centerforfamilyjustice.org. Going to throw it over to Rob Adams now for a look at the forecast. Rob? Kate, good to be back here in the studio. Of course, we were all out shooting the Men of HAN Network calendar, but let's jump into the <laughs> I <forecast>. wish. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to do a gift yesterday afternoon, although it was not going to be the Men of HAN calendar, I can assure you that. Uh, speedos for none of us. In any event, let's get to the forecast today. Sunny and a high near 37. Yeah, I said that correctly. 37 with a wind chill between 15 and 25. If you were out there this morning, it was cold. I know it was 23 when I left and... 18 when I was home this morning. It was cold. Mostly clear tonight, low 20, so just give you an idea. And the wind won't help us. Out of the north today at 14, then out of the northwest from 6 to 11 tonight. For Wednesday, mostly sunny and 42. We're going to try to climb a little higher, but the wind chill at times between 15 and 25. And again, the wind might be up near 11 out of the south, so that's some good news. Now to Wednesday night, a chance of showers after 9, mostly cloudy, low 40 with a south wind from 15 miles per hour. Thursday, more showers, but really after 9 in the morning through the balance of the afternoon, and with us looking at doing tennis that day, things are a little dicey, a high near 56, so the temperature trying to rise, but it doesn't get much better, everyone. We move to Thursday night, cloudy, chance of showers, 40 for your low. Friday, more of the same with a high of 50. Saturday, 45. Sunday, 44. Monday, 
huzzah, 50, mostly sunny. We have a chance of seeing spring, and of course, it is opening day down in the Bronx, so you'd like to see some better weather. Around these parts, though, Ridgefield at 29, Darien is at 32, and here in Shelton, you have 30, and no, I did not forget the Red Sox. Hopefully, better weather for them as well today. One of two games to get rained out or snowed out or whatever. <laughs> hey, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Rob. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Donald Dang takes a look back on this day in history. Rob has a sports update, and we have some more news coming up after this. Had a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday in the I Park building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com. That's CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Like them on Facebook. It's time to come back to hometown banking, where people are taken into account, not just balances, where community comes first, a place where there's more than one kind of interest, where automation will never replace consideration, where they not only know your name, they know your dog's name too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. For over 25 years, Mike Sizzik Painting and Wallpapering has been the name to know for residential and commercial properties in Fairfield County. He uses only the top brands, including Benjamin Moore, for impeccable preparation and lasting quality. Call Mike now and receive $500 off any job over $7,000. Mike is currently accepting reservations for spring, so call him today at 203-770-8869 or 203-770-8869. 972-3310. For your custom painting, finishing, and staining needs, it's Mike Sizzik. Join the HAN Network and Make-A-Wish Connecticut to help make travel wishes come true for local kids with life-threatening medical conditions. Donate your unused airline miles to the HAN Network Wishes in Flight campaign. Over 70% of wishes granted involve travel, and your unused airline miles can help make kids' dreams become a reality. Plus, once you donate your miles to Make-A-Wish, they will never expire. Donate your unused miles and help the HAN Network share the power of a wish. Hi, I'm Rob Adams with my good friend Donald Eng, and we're the home team for Nutmeg Sports Monday through Wednesday at 2 o'clock right here on the HAN Network. We are the place for all things Connecticut sports, so come hang out with us on Nutmeg Sports. Don? They don't call him the best color man in the game for nothing. Nutmeg Sports, 2 o'clock, Monday through Wednesday, right here on the HAN Network. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Had a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? It's Tuesday, April 5th, and we're back on your coffee break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and it's time to take a look back on this date in history with Donald Ang. Don. Well, Kate, it is April 5th, and we go all the way back to 16. 14. In Virginia, Native American Pocahontas marries English colonist John Rolfe. By the way, if you liked the animated ver uh, movie version of this, stop listening. She had been captured the year before, and the English demanded some food for her return. During her captivity, she had adopted English ways and took the name Rebecca. She and Rolfe traveled to England the following year, where she became something of a celebrity. Uh, she unfortunately died of an unknown illness in 1617. To 1792, President George Washington exercises his veto authority for the first time in U.S. history. The bill he vetoed, by the way, was a plan for dividing seats in the House of Representatives that would have given more seats for northern states, which made up the bulk of the population of the new country. Uh, Washington, a southern gentleman, vetoed the bill that would have given the North more representation. 1887, on this day, Ann Sullivan teaches Helen Keller the meaning of the word water as spelled out in the manual alphabet. Now for most people, uh, that's about where their knowledge of Helen Keller ends, but she did go on to graduate Radcliffe College. She became a leading lecturer and political advocate and published 12 books before dying at age 87 
in Easton, Connecticut. And finally, now we go to 1984, Las Vegas for this. That's Kareem. They wait on him. And the fans love it. Magic right side. Kareem post up. They go to Kareem. Kareem backs here. Hook shot. It's up. It's up. It's up. It's up. Professional basketball, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That was, of course, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar scoring the 31,420th point of his career, breaking the NBA's all-time scoring record that had been held by Wilt Chamberlain. There were over 18,000 fans in attendance at the Thomas and Mack Center at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, to watch the Lakers play the Utah Jazz. Uh, Abdul-Jabbar remains the NBA's all-time leading scorer with 38,387 points ahead of Carl Malone, Kobe Bryant, and Michael Jordan. Chamberlain now holding down fifth place on the list. That is your look back in history for April 5th. I am Donald Ng. All right, thanks so much, Don. Well, before we throw it over to Rob for a sports update, we have some sports-related news out of Darianne. In a letter shared by Darianne Selectman Rob Richards at Monday night's Board of Selectmen meeting, eight nearby households have signed off on permanent lights at Darianne High School with a series of guidelines and restrictions. Some of those compromise items included an adjusted appraisal on their home value so as not to create an adverse economic impact, 10 games a year, and only varsity games. Included in those neighbors was Paul Mikulski, who has filed lawsuits over field use and related planning and zoning decisions. It is the first time that neighbors have agreed to permanent lights in a battle that has gone on for over a decade. Recently, school superintendent Dan Brenner also recommended permanent lights as part of the multi-part facility plan for Darien High. But it's time to throw it over to Rob Adams now, who I know is very interested in that news. Rob? Absolutely, Kate, and that's something we'll talk more about on Nutmeg Sports later today. It'll be a busy Nutmeg Sports. We'll get back to that in a moment. There was just one local score from yesterday because with all the rain, the cold, I mean, it was just not possible to play basically anything yesterday afternoon. Fairfield Ward, however, in boys lacrosse, knocked off Norwalk 5-4. to four. Dakari Eason had two goals in the loss, while Jack Potenza scored twice for the Mustang and Jake Fuss added two assists. I'll go this way so the logo's not overpowering me. All right, let's try this. I was getting eaten up by the FCI. It's a powerful logo. It, it is a powerful logo. Uh, by the way, if you missed it from over the weekend, a little more serious news, former Wilton football coach Tom Fujitani died on Sunday. Fujitani coached the Warriors for 32 seasons, leaving after the 2000 campaign with a record of 163, 147, and zero. In that picture right there, that's the four coaches in Wilton football history. Bruce Cunningham on the left, Coach Fujitani, uh, is second in. That's former coach Nick Zito, the former athletic director, or Nick Zioli, excuse me, as well. And on the far right is the current baseball coach and one-time football coach, Tim Egan. Nonetheless, Fujitani did coach the Warriors for 32 years, won the 1988 FCAC football championship, a Greenwich High School graduate, Tom Fujitani, was 73. Don and I will have more on Nutmeg Sports at 2 today, including an interview with Tim Murphy on the state of girls soccer in Wilton, along with highlights from our first baseball game of the year, first baseball broadcast, more on Coach Fujitani, and of course the Darien Lights. It's a very busy schedule now today. You've got Trinity Catholic at Bethel, Ward, this is all baseball, Ward at Weston, Pomperog at Ridgefield, Newtown, home for Staples, White Plains from New York comes calling on the Danbury Hatters. In softball, Ward at Bunnell, East Haven hosting Stanford, Ludlow at Massac, Danbury at Darien, Staples home for Greenwich, New Milford at Norwalk, Trinity Catholic goes to Mamaroneck of New York, and Pomperog is at Ridgefield. Now to boys lacrosse. Central is at Stanford, Greenwich home for West Hill, Trinity Catholic at Norwalk, Wilton at Trumbull, Darien is at McMahon. To girls lacrosse, Darianne at Ward, Bethel at Stamford, St. Joseph at Danbury, Staples at Norwalk, Wilton home for Ridgefield, and John Jay of New York comes to New Canaan High School at 4.30. That game right here on the HAN Network. Frank Renito and I will have the call at Dunning Field. Boys outdoor track and field, St. Joseph is at Ludlow, Weston and, Weston and West Hill. I'm going to say that four times fast. Weston and West Hill are at Wilton. 
and they'll have a wildly wonderful, anyway. Uh, Central <laughs> at Staples, and from Girls Outdoor Track and Field, Ward at Darien, Boys Tennis. It's Staples hosting Weston, New Fairfield at Danbury, Daniel Hand at Ludlow, Girls Tennis, Ludlow is at Newtown, Boys Golf, Danbury and Central at Fairchild, Fairchild Wheeler, that's where they're gonna play. Ridgefield is at St. Joseph at Tashua Knowles, and finally, Darien at Ward at Smith Richardson at three o'clock. But don't forget, Two things, Nutmeg Sports at 2, John Jay, New Canaan, Girls Lacrosse at 4.30. With sports, I'm Rob Adams. Kate, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Rob. Well, getting back to a little more news today, Wilton resident Dana Haddix Wright was very excited when she learned that House Bill 5450, which would allow children with uncontrolled seizures access to medical cannabis, had made progress last week. The Public Health Committee, a joint standing committee of the Connecticut General Assembly, voted 20 to 7 to move the bill onto the House and Senate for a vote. Haddix Wright said it's the first step in the process. Her six-year-old daughter, Ella, suffers from Dravet syndrome, a rare genetic epileptic brain dysfunction that causes her to have uncontrolled seizures. Ella is on three medications and two supplements, totaling 15 pills each day, the side effects of which include, but are not limited to, permanent brain damage, aggressive behavior, and increased or decreased appetite. Haddix Wright and Trumbull mom Joy O'Meara, who are both fighting for medical cannabis for children, Children with serious issues will be guests this Wednesday on CT Pulse. You can catch that interview at 1230 on Wednesday. And in other news today, the State Department of Transportation has started repairs on a pair of bridges in Stratford. The DOT will make repairs to the bridge at Route 110 over Pumpkin Ground Brook and will replace a bridge on Route 110 over Freeman Brook. Motorists can expect some lane closures on Route 110 between the northern area of Main Street and Glenavon Street. Traffic control will be used to guide drivers through the work zone and that work will be done between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. on weekdays. Also beginning this week, all southbound traffic on Route 110 will be detoured onto Main Street. Motorists will continue south on Main Street and reconnect with Route 110 near Pex Mill Pond. Drivers traveling northbound on Route 110 will not be affected by that detour. And when the Wilton Women's Club was founded 50 years ago, one of its first acts was working to help clean up the Norwalk River. When it presented its 50th anniversary fashion show and fundraiser on Friday, April 1st, all proceeds are going to support the Wilton section of the Norwalk River Valley Trail. Jeanette Ross of the Wilton Bulletin captured this video from the fashion show. Check it out. This AJN Network video is brought to you by Walter Stewart's Market. for our 50th anniversary fashion show and fundraiser. The club was founded back in 1966 by Ms. Betty Sternad, and I'm happy to say that Ms. Sternad is still a member of the club. And we are carrying on her mission of philanthropy and community service. Every year we hold a fundraiser for a beneficiary, and this year our beneficiary is the Wilton section of the Norwalk River Valley Trail. The trail is being built from Norwalk, Half Pasture Beach, all the way up to Danbury. And we're very excited about the part of the trail that's already in Wilton. Right now, the committee is working on expanding the trail, connecting it, and creating a platform where local science teachers can bring Wilton students out to learn more about the environment all around them in Wilton. So traditionally, our fashion show at the fundraiser has focused on nighttime social party type dresses. But since this year our beneficiary is the trail, we decided to focus on fashions that are more outdoor and active lifestyle type outfits, things that people would wear more during the daytime. So we're very excited to see what we see. Thanks again to Jeanette Ross for capturing that video. Going to throw it back over to Rob quickly for some breaking sports news. Rob? Yeah, Kate, sad to report that uh, Mike Sandlock, a former Major League Baseball player, a Greenwich resident, in fact, has passed away. He was an old Greenwich native and a resident of Costco, died late Monday night and was 100 years old. You're talking about a man who made his debut in 1942 with the Boston Braves, roomed with the future Hall of Famer Warren Spahn, played for, for the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1945, hitting 282 with two home runs and 17 runs batted in. Played about a decade in the major leagues, in fact, finishing up his career with the Pirates in 1953, batting 240 overall for his career. 
Mike Sandlock, again, who was uh, a really nice man and a gentleman I actually had a chance to talk to and sit with a few times on one day or another. Mike Sandlock was 100 years old. Kate, back over to you. All right. Thanks so much, Rob. We're going to step out for a break. And when we come back, we have a special guest. As April is National Occupational Therapy Month, we have a special guest joining us from Griffin Hospital to tell us more. That's coming up after this. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened. Grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personal staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. A Better View Window Cleaning Plus has been cleaning glass all over Connecticut for over 20 years. They also specialize in cleaning chandeliers, mirrors, skylights, tiles, and will power wash anything that needs cleaning. They hold an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and are fully insured and bonded. When you deal with A Better View, you're dealing with the best, not the rest. Call today for a free estimate, 203-284-8836, or visit them online, abetterviewcleaning.com. Alberta Londano Professional Painting, Wallpapering, and Carpentry has been serving Fairfield County for over 20 years. Based in Norwalk, Alberto takes pride in his work by offering you only the best quality service and products. Call Alberto today to get a free estimate and be one step closer to a new and exciting home makeover. 203-866-9635. For more than 50 years, Triple S has been Fairfield County's expert service for carpet, upholstery, and drapery cleaning. We provide the best in repairs and in-depth restoration, understanding fabrics and how to properly clean and restore them. Our staff will come to your home to clean your wall-to-wall -wall carpet to perfection. We can also pick up your fine carpets and bring them to our facilities. With locations in Norwalk, Stamford, and Stratford, Triple S will get the job done fast, big or small. At Triple S, you can count on our people as well as our cleaning. Find us at triplesclean.com or 203-847-8. What's happening up in Hartford and what's trending in the Nutmeg State? Join Kate Chaplinski and Josh Fisher on CT Pulse Live Wednesdays at 12.30 to find out. We talk to the leaders and newsmakers while breaking down the stories you should be paying attention to each week. With the help of HAN's editorial cartoonist Doug Smith, we take a humorous look at the news of the week. We talk about everything you were told you should avoid bringing up in polite company. CT Pulse Wednesdays at 12.30 on the HAN Network. When it comes to local entertainment, we've got it all. From movies, local artists, etiquette, and more. Watch HAN Arts and Leisure every Thursday at 2 on the HAN Network. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened. Grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, there's... At the Sylvan Learning Center of Darien, experienced teachers and personalized academic support equals superior results. Our certified teachers uncover skill gaps, address specific needs, and help students realize greater academic success and increased confidence. We're enrolling now. Individualized after-school tutoring in reading, math, history, elementary math, algebra, geometry, calculus, high school science, and study skills. For a free consultation, call 203-655-3276 or email gmcsylvan at gmail.com. Can't wait for it to get warmer so you can start fishing again? Get over to the Dock Shop, where they have the latest in fishing tackle, marine electronics, boating supplies, and more. But remember, the Dock Shop isn't your average tackle shop. You'll also find the finest selection of nautical apparel, jewelry, home decor, and gifts in New England. 
boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, dockshop.com. I'm John Kovac. I'm a newspaper editor. I'm a high school football coach. I'm a television presenter. And I want you to love fishing as much as I do. Tune into Yankee Fisherman, Thursdays at 1 on the HAN Network. It's like going to the tackle shop without leaving your office. I'm Denise DiGregoli, the host of The Drive on the HAN Network. Join me Tuesdays for some motivational, intelligent talk with a little humor as we visit with people who live their lives mindfully. Tune in to The Drive live on Tuesdays, 1230, here on the HAN Network. I'm and we're back on this Tuesday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. As we mentioned earlier, April is National Occupational Therapy Month, and we have a special guest joining us today from Griffin Hospital, a return guest, occupational therapist Leslie Prescott. Leslie, welcome back. Well, thank you for having me back. It's yeah. a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. And we should say, Leslie, tell us first a little bit about occupational therapy and how it can help people. Occupational therapy is the only profession who we help people across the lifespan to live the life their fullest life the way they want to. Um, to do things they want to do and what they need to do using therapeutic uh, activities of daily living. Mm. We encourage people to live life to the fullest, to do what they want and also to prevent illness and to either live better with illness or with injury. The common occupational therapy intervention, it includes and it's not really limited to, activity of daily living retraining and we also work with low vision we also work with uh, orthopedic rehabilitation and we also work with upper extremities and splinting making wow and so this could be really life-changing for somebody just kind of relearning these skills right absolutely and do you feel like all the people that need this help are getting it or do you think maybe they're hesitant to to go out there looking for it? Oh basically we receive referrals from their primary care providers mm -hmm. or sometimes from an orth orthopedic doctor or a low vision uh, ophthalmologist or any type of specialist they know about occupational therapy and they know how we help people regain and to restore function. That's great and I know you brought along oh, yeah. a lot of stuff for us to check out so what are some of the things we have here? As I mentioned before, we work on custom splinting. Mm -hmm. So let's say that we have a person come in with arthritis, they're having a lot of joint pain mm. and having a lot of swelling in their hands. We would um, evaluate them and give them like a compression glove mm -hmm. to help with the edema management. And another thing with arthritis is very important to protect the joint, okay? And that's gonna help the patient recover as they, um, I put it on the right way, <laughs> it's gonna help the patient recover and they can engage in their daily activity without aggravating the joint. Mm. Joint protection is very important to restore function. And as I mentioned, I didn't mention before, we also work with people recovering from stroke. And the main concern we have as occupational therapists is that they have one side weakness and sometimes their muscles might kick in and they might have high tone mm -hmm. and they might start posturing their fingers in a flexion and we don't want to promote deformity, we want to restore function, we want to minimize the tone as they recover. So we would, even in the acute setting in the hospital, we would get a consult to make a custom splint and we would fabricate the splint on the patient just to put the patient mm -hmm. in a more functional position to minimize the tone and to restore function. Wow. And now I know we have a guinea pig here, ah. Eric Gendron, who is going to uh, take some tests for us. Can you explain what Eric's going to be doing for us? Well, Eric, <laughs> today is uh, Occupational Therapy Month, and we're talking about strength and dexterity. So I am going to test Eric's grip strength okay. using a dynamometer. Okay. Mm. Now, it's a hydraulic system, so basically you're not going to feel any spring back on it, but I'm going to ask you to press as hard as you can. It's going to test your force, okay? So are you right or left-handed? Right. Okay. So just for today, mm -hmm. I'm just going to test his dominant hand. Okay. So your position is great. So <laughs> what I need for you to do is put your elbow at 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. I want your forearm at neutral, your wrist at neutral. Relax your shoulder. Hold that position. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in front, if that's okay. Yes. And 
I'm going to have you squeeze it three times. I want you to squeeze as hard as you can. Squeeze as hard as you can. OK. Good. Ooh, very good. That's hard. Really strong. <laughs> OK, so nice. you, got, you got 65 pounds. OK. I'm going to have you do it again, Eric. Squeeze as hard as you can. Good. Okay, we got 60 pounds. And this is based on his age, right? This is based so he's going to do it three age. times. Okay. So he's going to do it three times. And what I do is I add it up and I take the average and I'll tell him where he, he's at with his age. Squeeze. We, then we find out how much of a weakling I am. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Good. And relax. So we got 61 pounds. 61, okay. Okay, so Eric, I have to add it up and I'll let and you know. And we'll see how you're doing. So see Eric's 28 I, years old, going to be 29 years soon. Old. So in just a few days. Oh no. Eric. Oh no, it's not looking I good, don't know. Eric. <laughs> let me just add it up. Oh boy. <laughs> I think you did a good job. Yeah. It looked hard. <laughs> okay. Oh, what am I doing? Okay, 60 plus 65. One. And you have this, so I just want to mention on your chart, you have it from age 20 to 24 all the way to 75 plus. So you have quite a range of, of things to check. Okay, Eric. Right now, we're looking at your age range for someone who's 28 years old for a man, for a right-hand man, is supposed to be 120 pounds. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a little bit... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So what can yeah. he do to it? Is there any way to improve Abs that? Absolutely. So how right. does he improve that? Well, what you can do <laughs> is you can go to your primary doctor and you can ask for an <laughs> occupational therapy evaluation and treat. And we can work on some strengthening skills and work on some functional things to make you a little bit more stronger. That's right. And you know, I do say we do a lot of physical work. He's one of our directors and so he is lugging things around. So I'm surprised, Eric, that you yeah. didn't perform so well, but it's Maybe all right. Maybe you held back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> But Leslie, I know now this month is significant. Every Tuesday, that's starting today, there's going to be programs at Griffin Hospital, informational sessions. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Right. Today, Tuesday, just as I demonstrated today with Eric, we're having dexterity and strength. Great. So we're going to have this um, dynamometer there, and people get to see how strong their grip strength is and other activities to test your strength. And that's today. It's in Griffin Hospital, right in front of the cafeteria. And basically, we're going to provide information. It's from noon to 1. Mm -hmm. And then next Tuesday is every Tuesday in April. So next Tuesday to 12, we're going to talk about managing osteoarthritis. We're going to have a lot more uh, devices there. Like this is a jar opener. Mm -hmm. We're going to show things like a built-up spoon just to alleviate the pain in your joints and also active range of motion exercises to help with the healing. And Tuesday, April 19th, you're going to see me there for low vision. Right, which we've talked about yes, before on this show. Yes, we've talked about it. I didn't have this last time, but we have like a LED light handheld oh. magnifier and different type of adaptive devices that we train people with low vision to use so they can see better and function better. And Tuesday, the last Tuesday of this month, we're going to have stroke education. And again, we'll have devices like this custom splint and a lot of other tools that we use to facilitate recovery. That's great. Now, Leslie, would you have to say it's changing people's lives, just these adaptive devices can Absolutely. really make a difference. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Adaptive devices, um, relearning ADLs, retraining, and also, which is activities of daily living, also therapeutic exercises to make you stronger. That's great. And if people want more information on the programs, where can they go? Well, they can contact us at 203 732-7445 or griffinhealth.org. All right. Thank you so much, Thank Leslie, you. again for joining us. We really well, appreciate it. Thank you for having it. me back. I appreciate it. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today's coffee break coming up at 1230, The Drive with Denise, 2 o'clock Nutmeg Sports, Nutmeg Sports rather. We'll see you tomorrow.